in the closet today, I'm here with designer Jenny Lee, okay. who I met recently at the Super Speaker. Yeah. And Woo. he's out there. <laughs> and I literally can, well, I have to put it on. But since I bought this, I've yeah. worn this every second day. Amazing. Because it's just so easy to wear. Yeah. And is it, and I was, when I was ironing it this morning, yeah. I wonder about the patient. Is it a zero waste? Like, like the it's, it's not zero waste, but it's very close to that. Yeah. yeah. I know. When I, for me, I mean, it always starts with design and concepts and stuff like that for me. So that, that design started out as kind of two rectangles kind of like bisecting each other. And then when I made the pattern and laid it out, I was like, wow, this is probably the closest to zero waste <laughs> I've ever, I've ever done. And it wasn't like a conscious let's do a zero waste kind of. Um, situation, but um, yeah, it worked out. Almost. Yeah, yeah, because I find often with zero waste, in the attempt to not have any waste, you have these voluminous garments that actually make you look a lot bigger and they don't suit everyone. So hard. I admire anyone that does that, you know, that does zero waste because it's such an amazing thing like, to, to do, but it is, I can imagine it would be very restrictive design wise. Yeah, yeah. And there are some people that that have the kind of brain that can work in zero waste and still, you know, really push the design side of things. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a science and it's a math, math, you know, mathematics. It's, yeah. it's like those um, puzzles that you used to yeah. that are a square and yes. you've got to make everything fit. Yeah, them. exactly. Yeah. 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 So tell me about your brain. Uh, so my brand Jimmy D has been going for 13 years now. Wow. I know. So, um, yeah, it started, um, my background kind of is more photography and design. So I kind of discovered photography in my, like, second to last year at high school and fell head over heels into that and thought I was going to be a fashion photographer and went to design school, did a degree in photography, but in the very end I kind of realized that I was more interested in the clothes that I was photographing than the actual photography side of things. Um, and at the same time I was working in retail in Wellington for a school called Unity and we were stocking labels like Karen Walker and Kate Sylvester and Natalia Puccier and Blanche and these labels that I loved and it was at a time when they didn't have their own stores in Wellington and so I'd I managed to get myself into the store and just started looking at the clothes and how they were made and working with customers and figuring out like what they liked and what they didn't like and what they needed and um, and that was kind of my earliest training. I still think retail is one of the best forms of training for any designer. Um, and Why do you say that? Because I'm always thinking of my customer and I'm always thinking of her wardrobe and I'm thinking about what she'll have from me from previous seasons and how you push that forward. Because when you're working in retail and you have a customer, like one of your regulars that comes in, one of the worst things that can happen is you're like, I don't have anything to show you. You know, you've, you've got that, you've got that, or you've got something like that. You want to give people something new every season yeah. that, that will keep them coming back and maybe challenge them. Maybe they didn't even know that they wanted that thing. You know, so so that's why I think retail is a really important training because I'm I'm always thinking of the customer at the end. You know, it's like what, yeah, just how I can keep them coming back every season, and and, and so they won't get bored. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when you, because you've got your new range mm -hmm. just over here, can yep. you do a swing around? And... So you always consider what. Was came previously yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, if I've been working with a with the same kind of fabric for a few seasons, I think right, it's time to change it up, you know, like let's let's introduce a different kind of finish, make something kind of shiny or slinkier, or let's go back to something sheer again, let's introduce some colours, um, let's maybe do a few more kind of form fitting things. Yeah, so it's it's always a juggling it every season and yeah I, I've got a few kind of key customers in my head every season and I want them to come and look at the new collection and be like oh I haven't got anything like that or this is different or oh it's like that shape but different you know it's like I, 
I'm always trying to anticipate that that end outcome. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so in terms of fabrics, yes, I think I think when I was young, because so I'm in my fifties now, and um, we had a much more um, contained market because there was tax on imported yep. clothing, and so we had a lot of fabric stores. Yeah, and people just we just made our own clothes. Occasionally, Mum would go and get like a beautiful piece of wool, and she'd take it to. The Amazing. Yeah. Um, but there'd be a whole lot of um, clothing, um, fabric stores, and you knew where to go if you wanted wool, you knew who specialised in silks, yep. you know, because each of them had their own sort of special, speciality fabrics. Mm-hmm. Um, and now we, you know, you have Spotlight and you have, you know, there's so few, mm. um, there's so few textile stores. Yes, and with a mass of big brands like the H and M's and the Zara's, with these ne- very narrow um, textile ranges of synthetics and cotton, mm. you know, polyester, whether that globally has narrowed the the textiles available for uh, within mm. the market. I mean, yeah, it, it's it, it's almost becoming harder to work with natural fibres because for some reason natural fiber prices seem to be increasing every season. Like our silk prices have gone up like 30% in the next season. Um, So I do feel like it's becoming increasingly hard to work with natural fibers. There's definitely a push towards polyesters and and those kind of fabrics or viscose. so, and, uh, yeah, I know what you're saying, and, and we're kind of at the mercy of these people that are bringing fabrics into New Zealand, and, and at the mercy of what um, the bigger labels here are, are going for as well. You know, that's where they're going to target their, their collections, their fabric collections, too, as those are the big ones. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very, like, I like natural fibers, and I like the way they feel. And again, I think working in retail, when you're flicking through a rack, I think that's that's what people, it's one of the first things that people notice is the feel of a garment, you know. So that tactile kind of response to fabric is, is really important to me. So I'm going to try as hard as I can to try and, you know, stick to that kind of quality. And, and if I can't get it from one supplier or, you know. Yeah, I wonder if there's going to be a move away from synthetics because... Um, all the research coming mm. out now about the contamination of our waterways yep. from, from synthetic fabrics. And whether there's going to be a real market shift in some I I think so. I yeah. think, and I know I said to you before that I, I think there's been this kind of push towards kind of um, ethical and um, sustainable fabrics before. But it was almost kind of buzzwords, you know, and people kind of went there because they thought they could sell more clothes because it was like a cool thing. But I feel, I really feel now there's like more of a sense of urgency and and people are, are like consumers are more aware than ever and really making um, conscious decisions. You know, like we went out for breakfast the other day and got oh, Bloody Mary's. And you know, it didn't come with a straw, which was yeah. like so refreshing. And and I just feel like little things like that are, are going to kind of start snowballing. And it's the, people are going to be a lot more concerned with the idea of waste and the environment. And it's going to be really uncool to be wasteful. So I can feel that kind of you know snowballing. Your clothing is such great quality in such beautiful fabrics. Mm. Ideally, where would you like, if someone buys an outfit mm-hmm. from you, what would you like its life, its life history to be? Like? Where would you like to see it go? Um, I would like it to stay in someone's wardrobe together. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that's number one. That, and that's what we're trying to create, is clothing that, uh, you know, obviously, we don't want we don't want it to be disposable in, in any way. We want, I mean, a lot of our pieces are not cheap, they're, they're investment pieces, but 
Um, and, and, you know, yeah, being those kind of pieces, we want people to hold on to them for a while. Like, we, every season we only ever make to order. So we go and sell our collections all over New Zealand. We get the orders from the stores and that's exactly what we make. So we have very little spare stock that's, you know, stock at the end of the season that's just kind of sitting around. So, um, yeah, ideally, everything that we make finds a home and gets, you know, gets held on to. And that's in itself is minimising waste. Exactly, exactly, exactly. We're not just being like, let's make 200 of those and hope we can sell them. Oh, we didn't? Oh, well, send them off to the landfill or, you know, like, just... Off to the island. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a lot more considered and it's a lot more concise. Um, And every once in a while, I look on Trade Me and I might come across some of my things, (laughs) which is, like, great because, you know, it's going to find another home. Um, A little bit of me is, like, sad that someone bought something and wants to part with it, but I'm also kind of reassured because they actually always seem to go for quite good prices, so oh, <laughs> it's I nice to know, that's, yeah, 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 and that's kind of feedback that I seem to get quite a lot, so, yeah. All your productions in New Zealand? Yeah. In here? Uh, no, not in here. Right. But, um, you do your sampling yeah. in here? Yeah. yeah. Um, most, well, um, so we have Ash that works um, in the workroom and she does quite a bit of sampling for us. Um, and then we also have a little network of other sample machinists, um, some of which are women that work from home. Um, that's so, yeah, so things for us. Um, others are factories, um, but we know all of our factories. We've been to all of the factories. Um, so, yeah, it's a good little community of people um, that, we, that we work with. And a short supply chain. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, nice. yeah. yeah. It's, I remember one day going for a drive around the factories, picking up samples and dropping things off, and sitting in the car and just being like, "This is so nice. I couldn't, I couldn't do this in anywhere else in the world, really. Like, you know, and if if I was working offshore and having stuff made in China, you, you wouldn't get that same sense of satisfaction. You know, going around and driving and seeing." you know, the, the ladies that run the factory and seeing the people that sell your clothes, it, it's a, it is a really good feeling to know that, you know, every step of that process we know, you know, the people that are, that are making the clothes. It's nice. And it is, you know, you, you talk to designers and retaining that production on shore is really, it's not easy. It's not easy. Um, no, I mean, it's... it's it makes our, it does make our product more expensive, but you know there are less and less um, factories and like dye houses and fleeters and there's less and less of those you know um, every year and it, it doesn't make sense not to not to support them otherwise they'll be gone forever you know. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So. Um what are you concerned about in the industry? Um, yeah, I'm concerned about I'm concerned about waste, um, fabric waste, where where it goes. Um, it just seems mind-boggling to me that natural fibers like silk and cotton um, can't get um, well, you can't re- you can't rework with that fiber when, you know with the offcuts. It, I don't know. I don't. I'm not. I don't have a sciencey brain, but surely, surely that's going to happen. So you know. There are emerging technologies, mm. but it's going to take a while for yeah. them to be commercialised, and then they have to be onshore. Yeah. Because if your waste is here, then surely we process it. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, and there's a whole lot of kind of economic limitations around it. Right. But enough volume to support the supply chain. Yeah. Those sort of things coming. Yeah. And what are you feeling optimistic about? I think, like I said, I just think we're going to. There's a bit of a shift towards accountability more and more, and like in every industry, but particularly in fashion. You know, there's a, there's a website called, uh, an Instagram called Diet Prada, which is constantly looking at um, designers' collections and, and calling them out for 
um, copying or for kind of any kind of um, ethical or sustainable kind of things that they're not doing. Or you know. so there's this kind of sense of accountability that's coming to the industry, which is which I think is a, is a really good thing. Um, and like I said, just people being like consumers being more conscious um, of of fabrics, and you know, then that people are talking about you know, microfibers and, and um, synthetics and um, fur and there's just a lot more dialogue around those things and the more dialogue we have from the consumer, the more the fabrics that we're going to get offered are going to, you know, relate, you know, with, we'll, hopefully sustainability will be where fabric companies start now. So, yeah. And DNA. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Interesting. Well, thank you for taking the time to talk with you. Ah, anytime. Show. It's lovely to see you. Yeah, thank you again. Can I have a quick flick through the new Yeah, please, do. Yeah. <laughs>